Well, welcome back, gang. Thanks an awful lot for hanging in there with us. You're watching BNN TV's It's All About Arts, and I, I, I have to say that it's, it's not often we get, uh, and we have, we have great artists here. We have, we have people that are doing amazing things like they are over in, in, in the Waltham Mills Open Studios in their art association. They're doing great, great things, but to have somebody that's recognized as widely as an expert in what she does, uh, to have her sitting on the dais here with us today is is such such an honor for me. Uh, Bob Cone, Bob Barb Cone, thank you very much. I want to nice call you Barbara, you. but I'm not going oh, to it's because okay, Janice said don't do it. I <laughs> said it. I said I won't. Bob, how are you? Thank you for Good, coming in you. and spending thank some you time for with us. Me. Appreciate it. How's everything? Good. Did you busy. find us okay? Busy. I did. No problem. That's GPS. The GPS. Isn't it a wonder? I don't know how we got around years ago. I don't ago. know either. No. Um, uh, I gave it away. You're an encaustic artist. Mm -hmm. uh, can you, for our friends at home, give us a brief description or walk through what exactly is is, is this thing we call? Well, it's a uh, it's actually a wax based, uh, two thousand year old medium. It's mm -hmm. the oldest artistic medium uh, mm -hmm. in the world. Uh, the Greeks started messing around with it. Um, so it's fairly simple. It's beeswax and a pine resin to just make it a little less soft. Yeah. Um, and then if it's used as paint, if it's colored, then there's pigment added, of course. And it's worked in its molten state, um, which is where things get tricky because it wants to harden, of course, immediately. Yeah. Yeah. Is, is, is the process, I, you know, I, 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 I've asked others this and I kind of get this uh, roundabout answer. So I'm going to throw the hard one out here okay. first, if it's okay. <laughs> sure. Is it a journey or, 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 or is, it, is, it, is, it, is, is doing a piece in this, kind of, in this kind of medium laid out firm? This is what I want to end up with. This is what I want to have at the end of the process and have it come to that. Or because you're working in such a fluid and such a, a moving medium, uh, changing medium so quick, so, so, you know, is it an adventure all the time? Well, it is for me. Mm -hmm. um, for one thing, it doesn't want to do what you want it to do. Yeah, that's what I am. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't want to do what you've planned. Um, so it's a medium of happy accidents. Okay. I yeah, that's that. a great way of putting yeah. it. How long have you been doing this medium? Gosh, I bet 10 years or really? something like that. Has it always yeah. been this, or, or is it something you fell into? No, I think a lot of encaustic artists come to it from other media. Uh -huh. um, you know, and sculptors and ceramicists were all kind of flocking to it. I worked in oils, watercolor, mixed media, yeah. um, printmaking. Everything you've yeah. been in, you've been in, yeah. you've been involved been at in it for a while. Yeah. yeah. Um, I want to I want to talk about your your space, where where you work, uh, because of the. Because of the, the 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 medium, because of the way the way it is and how it has to be treated, do you have a dedicated space to work? Yes. Um, is is it is it something that's attached? Is it atta attached to the house? Is it something that you kind of purposely keep separate from from where you live? Is um, it well, it requires a lot of equipment. Yeah. And a lot of um, electrical outlets yeah. and so on. So um, I have two studios actually. I'm working in right now. One mm -hmm. up in Maine. Um, in an old classroom building, oh, fun. Um, which is nice. kind of creepy and haunted and right. wonderful. Um, and then one in Waltham oh, you're uh, on oh, Beaver really? Street. Yeah, oh, I so I divide my time between those two spaces. Uh, that's great. When, when you're working, and it's time to, do you, are you working on wood? Generally speaking, encaustic is done on a rigid you know, strata because yeah. um, it can crack if it's on canvas. Yeah. So I work on birch panels. Birch mostly. panels, okay. You've got your blank panel and you've got everything's heated up and everything's ready, ready to go. Do you set a mood for yourself? I mean, is there Bach on the radio, on the, on the tune, <laughs> or is it, you know, is it, or is it the Almond Brother? I don't know, you know, is it something? Depends. you know, I can go from jazz to Aretha Franklin pretty quickly. Yeah, yeah. Um, so... I think, you know, it's the thing is that you have to wait for everything. When you get to the studio, you're forced to wait for everything to melt. Yeah, yeah. So you have this period where you have to kind of think about what you're doing. What am I going to do? What get do I want to do today? And then you walk over and it's not melted yet, so you <laughs> go back and wait. Um, so there's kind of a built-in meditation at the beginning. Is, is, it, is, is it something you can work on several pieces? 
Oh, yeah, I usually do, actually. So Particularly if I'm of, working in series, I may have three or four going. Yeah, so you'll have one at one stage of the process mm -hmm. and maybe move to, move to another one? Oh, yeah. Um, you, you said something interesting earlier that, that I thought was made me think but that when you add the pigment, you're actually painting with it. What do your tools look like? Oh, well, they don't look a whole lot like everyone else's tools except for the brushes, mm -hmm. which you don't have to clean, by the way. Which I is like that already. I like that I know. I was like, oh, yeah. I like that yes. oh, I'm so That sounds it. better. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you do have brushes, but you also have a lot of other scraping kinds of yeah. tools, yeah. silicon, um, you know, spatulas, uh, anything that's heat resistant. You mm -hmm. can't use anything but natural bristle because the encaustic will melt. Yeah, up. we'll take them away. So, um, but you know, pretty much. So you can use really cheap dime store and hardware store brushes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, are, are flat surfaces like large palette knives, are they, they part of your, of your work as well? I use, I use sharper things than that to carve. Generally. So you cut so into it once it sets? A lot, yeah. That's yeah. interesting. Yeah. That's great. We do a lot of carving. Now, because it's an adventure and because it's a journey, the pieces that you're working on, is there a point where you can say to yourself, this is done? You know, that's hard for all of us, no matter what we're working on. That's in. why it's my sixth ah. question. <laughs> yeah, like, um, you, you know, you leave the studio and you think, that's oh, looking pretty good. Yeah, you know, that yeah. might be done. And then you get there the next morning and you think, what was I, I thinking? thinking? <laughs> exactly, like, why did I think, okay, back to it. Um, with the encaustic, you, I mean, just like oil, you can kind of keep messing with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's a temptation. Um, but one thing, too, is if you really screw it up one day, you just scrape it, okay. essentially scrape it down. Yeah. Um, so you can go in and keep building layers and layers and layers, and if you don't like the latest layer, you can make corrections. How long does a piece typically take you, rough range? Oh, I'm, I'm slow. <laughs> um, you know, it'll, particularly at the beginning of a series when I'm feeling my way, it, it can take, one piece can take like two weeks. Oh, really? Yeah. But then once I kind of, okay, this is what I, then the next ones in the series, right. I kind of know what I want to do. That's fabulous. Uh, when you do your scrapings, are they going back in a pot? Oh, they go in this big, wonderful ball of multicolored okay, wax. That. That, That's yeah, an art in itself. I don't know what to do with oh afterwards, my gosh. but I have them kind of all around, you know. So, yeah. They're fancy paperweights. Oh, yeah. That's they're, what they're, they are. they're just cool looking. Yeah, they're very sure. cool looking. Yeah. Where have you been showing? You've been out? Uh, yeah, a lot, actually. Yeah, That's good. why I've been so busy. Um, I have work at the uh, Boston Design Center right now. Oh, what a great spot. Oh, it's Isn't particularly it the new gallery. It's, it's beautiful. beautiful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, my gosh, what a change. Yeah, um, And then in Portland, Maine, okay. uh, the Portland Art Gallery. I love and, uh, yeah, that's a beautiful... Are you a maniac by tra or are you from Walton? Well, I spend part of the time in Cambridge and part of the time in Maine. We've had a place up there for about four years. I got up there for the first time this last summer for a couple of really? places. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. We yeah. went all the way up to some, I don't know, Spruce Point thing up there. I'm in Spruce Head. Are you? <laughs> I love it up there. Isn't it beautiful? Hardly anyone in Maine knows where Spruce Head, Maine is. It's it, how tiny we are. unbelievable. I read at night uh, under the Aww. stars. No. Come know, on. It was beautiful. It is gorgeous. You've got, you've got some work for us to see. Yes, I do. Yes, you yeah, do. Can I'm we can of. we bring some of that up so that we can? And please walk me through. Take your time. Tell me what right. we're looking at. Well, I tried to keep it simple. There you go. Um, this is uh, one of my latest series. Uh, I think I have 21 panels in this. Wow. Um, or I had 21 panels. Uh, this is called Low Tide, and it's on an 18 by 18 inch uh, birch panel. And what I did was I. I used, believe it or not, I use a lot of hardware materials. For mm -hmm. one thing, they're really cheap. And for another thing, they, they really work well. This happens to be wall spackle. Oh. Um, I'm, now I'm, I've moved on to cement um, repair material. But uh, this was, uh, so I carved it. Um, and I, I was working from photographs of a beach walk I took in, in late January one of those days where everything is silver and black and white because there's so little light. It's so dark and, and, and cold. Um, and so working from these quick iPhone photographs I took, I 
tried to kind of recreate the patterns of the water draining from the marsh on the, sh on to the, the sand. sea. Yes, mm. that is exactly um, what it is. And I was fascinated with it. So yeah. I spent a lot of time on these. So basically, it's a combination of spackle, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, watercolor, gesso, of course, watercolor, uh, graphite, and then I did an, what they call an encaustic pour. So after all the surface was dry and sanded and ready to go and had all the other elements, then I did a pour of molten uh, encaustic over it. Beautiful, beautiful. Okay, let's keep going. This is another one in that same same series. series. Okay. Uh, same material. So these we can. These are beautiful. Thank you. If someone out who's listening on WBCA wants to see these, is are they being are they on a web a website someplace? Yes, most of them are on my website. Good, um, good. Not probably the last six or so because I'm a no, little that's behind okay. with photographing. I but yeah, they, they are. Um, I can feel this those moving. I can see. I can feel them moving. Can't oh, you? Thank you. Yeah, it's. There was so much movement of that water because it just kept draining yeah. and cutting patterns in the mm. sand. Yeah. And every foot I went was a different pattern. Um, yeah. But I had taken that walk maybe 18 months before. Right. And I'd finished something else and was kind of thinking, well, what now? Well, because you can't really do your medium plein air, I mean, is the photographs really a big deal for you? I mean, you really um, use them? Usually not, but in okay. this case, not what I'm working on now, yeah. but um, in this case, that was the inspiration. Right. I have them in my sketchbook, and then when I'm kind of stuck, I may go back. If I end up in Poland, where is the studio where you're going to be? It's in, old, it's in the old port. Okay, yeah, yeah. It's an old part on Middle Street. Man. Yeah, it's a nice beautiful dicks. building. <laughs> I know, it's gorgeous. <laughs> Um, what are you place. working on now? Is there anything you, you, you're going well, to dart to Waltham to work 18 by 18 was hard enough. So in Costa, are they big for you? Is you that tend, too big? Well, you tend to work small in Costa yeah, yeah. because it's hard to heat the whole surface at the same time. Mm. They become heavy, too. Uh, yeah. Well, now I'm at 36 by 36 inch birch panel. Talk about heavy. Yeah. Um, but I just really wanted to go larger. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm doing drawings and things and then adhering them to the panel. Uh, and that is my base, and then the costume goes over, and I'm carving down, th down through, so you can see. So I'm going to use a phrase my, my kids have been taught to use. So your sloppy copy is a sketch that you put onto the birch wood to, no, to actually, work from. No, it's, actually, uh, no, it's actually to work over. I've but you, but, it, but it gives you gives you a, not a, a template, really, isn't the word, but a kind of a, a roadmap to work from. Actually, it's more mark making. Really? It gives me, because in caustic, generally speaking, not everyone, but you don't get the thin, fine lines in your work so much. You, you can create that element, but it's kind of not naturally there, because mm -hmm. the minute you melt, everything kind of disappears again. Right. Um, <laughs> so what I've done is I've done my mark making and my fine lines and abstract kind of drawing, and then used that as a base for the encaustic for a painting. Okay. When you carve down through the encaustic, you can see parts of it. So right. you're thinking in 3D um, while you're working that way. Um, uh, when you carve in, when you, when you decide to, to start to cut, uh, is it a surprise? Well, it is because you can't, can't see what's under there so well anymore, so... <laughs> well, so, so you can't really design what you're going to see until you get there. No, you have to... But if you're carving and you're not liking, you know, you're not liking it, then you go back in with it. More goop. There you go. <laughs> hit, hit it with Great. your heat gun Start and over. you're ready to go. Let it, let it move some yeah. more. Uh, Bob, I want to thank you for, for being here. And, and as, as with everybody, please keep it, keep it. The, we want to keep the invitation on an open scale so that so that I'd love you to come back in and and if we could get a show where you could bring some of your work in it would be, uh, that it, would it, be that, that's because believe me you're not getting the full benefit of what these pieces are like uh, what, looking at them on, on TV or, or on a website you got to really be in the room because it hits many sensors, doesn't it? I mean, it, 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 you can feel the smell. You can. You, you, the, I like to walk around and look at them at different angles and, and, and stuff. And I think that that's really an important thing. Is there going to be anything showing you? Have a, a particular show coming up that we can see locally um, that that we well, can send Boston some friends? Well, Boston City Hall. I'm going to have a You're solo gonna... in Boston City Hall. Excellent. 
So um, that's probably the next big thing. Um, up with the city council is? Yes. Yeah, uh -huh. or you're not yeah, going to be in there. Scully's studio. You're going to be up where Suzanne does her thing? Yes. That's a great space. Yeah. I, uh, it's it nice because it's busy up there and the walls are just these big brick, you know, big cement walls yeah. you hang and, from. You yeah, know? that's one of the reasons I was thinking of going bigger. Because of just the space, it kind of seems to need a statement or two. Well, you just rent a forklift to get your pieces in there, right? <laughs> no, I haven't thought about that yet. <laughs> <laughs> Don't think about no, that. No, They'll no, work no, it no, out, no. believe me. No. They'll figure it out. Good. Thank you so Thank much you. for so being nice here with you. you. And uh, I want to thank everybody from from the Waltham uh, Mills Open Studios. Good luck, guys. Thank you very much for being here with us. It's a great pleasure. I'm glad you're feeling better. Thank you. Thank you for coming in. Um, Thanks again, Bob. Uh, listen, gang, you've been watching uh, It's All About Arts. My name is Glenn. I want to uh, take this opportunity to make sure I shout out and thank all the organizers for the Rosendale Open Studios. Janice and I had a fantastic time. Uh, uh, we, we got to see a lot of old friends and, and people came in that we've never seen before that, that enjoyed and stayed at our, our gallery and our studio to, uh, to hang out and kind of, kind of be with us. It's, it's what, it's what Open Studios is about getting to meet people and getting new people into your, your workspace. Uh, get out there and do something artful for yourself, please, this week. Go over to this uh, Waltham Mills Open Studios. It's November 5th and 6th, and it's Saturday and Sunday from 12 p.m. to 6 p.m., and that's 144 and 289, right? Moody Street in Waltham. Please go over and say hello to them. Make sure uh, uh, you uh, check out... Uh, Michael in uh, Wendy's work because you're going to be really impressed. Uh, like I like to say every week, please keep in the forefront of your minds our mothers, fathers, sons and daughters, aunts and uncles, nieces and nephews on foreign soil. Please do something artful, do something creative, send it to them. Make sure they know you're re remembering and thinking of them. We'll see you next week, okay gang? Have a great weekend. We'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.